and gentlemen. Today we're here to discuss the controversial issue of genetic screening of fetuses. To determine the predisposition towards certain congenital disorders, and even more concerning, whether to we should intervene to prevent them. <coughs> the first speaker will be me, Hamendi, the next speaker, Hamono, and our last speaker will be Yuzu. First, I'll define the keywords we'll discuss from this debate. Genetic screening is a process of analyzing DNA samples to detect the presence of a gene or genes associated with an inherited disorder. And illegal means to abolish by law and to punish those who do not abide. And also we define the term fetus as the unborn young human from the eighth week after conception to the moment of birth. Now I'll introduce our team burden. In order to win this debate, our side of the house will have to prove that genetic screening of fetus leads people to make immoral decision of depriving human lives. Our three arguments are, first, genetic testing often contributes to high abortion rate. Second, the test results often involve social, emotional, and financial consequences. And third, genetic screening itself threatens healthy pregnancy. <coughs> to begin with, genetic screening literally allows parents to choose babies, which is morally wrong. It is right to accept that the fetus conceived a healthy one would come to life. This actually, le this actually leads people to treat fetuses like commodities and science cheapening human life. This life into a creation with an option to purchase. In other words, genetic screening has direct relation to surgical abortion. According to the study conducted by Israeli Medical Genetics Association, 76% of the couples that were at risk for Gosher disease mainly affected children performed prenatal diagnosis and the pregnancies were terminated in 25% cases of fetuses with the disease. Basically, the main practical outcome of GD screening was a 66% reduction in birth prevalence, although the illness was known to be treatable. And also, while the current technology cannot detect the abnormalities through screening perfectly, the ambiguous data of the test results make people deny life in such an unacceptable way. The problem also links to the sex screening of fetuses. In China, sex screening has become popular because of a tradition of preferring sons to daughters. Some parents allow only one child to the abortion when they find out that the wife is carrying a girl. <coughs> this has led to a rising imbalance of ratio of men to women in China, and therefore the new Chinese law prohibits the sex screening of fetuses. So at this point, it is an undeniable fact that the screening of choosing babies will eventually develop into the widespread abuse of a screening to create designer babies chosen for other aesthetic or desirable qualities. Now let's move on to the next argument of abusing test results. Because the prenatal diagnosis revealed diverse information about an individual against privacy, genetic discrimination in employment or insurance are expected. For example, screening programs for sickle cell disease, which is an inherent blood disease prevalent among African Americans, have shown how negative outcomes can, can, can be. The genetic screening programs of the 1970s employed the sickle death test which failed to distinguish between the disease and carrier status. <coughs> African Americans were stigmatized by the carrier status in the form of being denied health and life insurance, employment opportunities, and even acceptance to the US Air Force Academy. So inadequate education and counseling at many of the early screening programs has equally confused the sickle cell trait to be indicative of a disease state to discriminate African Americans. This again poses an ethical dilemma by disease avoidance using pregnancy termination. And while the confidentiality of the information discovered is not observed, the screening will only disadvantage people through discrimination in employment and insurance. For more information? Yes. Um, the speaker please let me know how the genetic screening will result in discrimination. Result from discrimination? Result in discrimination. Okay. <laughs> to sum up, genetic screening of fetuses should be prohibited since it shows great disrespect for life and reveals private information towards undesirable outcomes. The following arguments will be continued by our next speaker, Hanano. Vote for our house. Thank you. Okay, let's welcome Bo Yoon. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ho Bo Yoon, the first speaker of the opposition.
Asian team. And this is my teammate Kim Jun Young, the second speaker, and this is Oh Sang Min, the third speaker. Our house believes that the genetic screening of embryos should be legalized. In order to win this debate, our team has to prove that the legalization of genetic testing and embryo will definitely be beneficial to uh, both the baby and its parents. To give you a quick roadmap of our presentations, I'll first explain the great advantage of using genetic screening and medical purpose to help the parents and the children. Next. The second speaker will give a presentation about the better results that will come when the genetic screening becomes legalized. Before I start off with my substantive argument, I'd like to rebut one of the claims made by the first speaker of the proposition site. The first speaker of the proposition site, Ms. Han, argued that genetic screening um, affect people to have tendency to choose their baby, which is morally wrong. However, the advocates of the legalization of genetic screening is supporting this motion for different and more fundamental reasons, not to justify the abortion of unwanted babies. In order to prevent, uh, prevent the proposition side from getting out of topic, topic, I would like to uh, reject it. I would like to first explain you a term, the value neutrality of science. The value neutrality of science, which means that it is not the science itself that answers and determines the value-related answers, but it is the people who apply science to their life. In other words, it is not the legalization of genetic testing and embryo that makes the parents to kill their baby, but the parents, but it's the parents' ethical view on abortion of uh, abortion. So. Finally, I'll proceed to our first substantive argument. Undergoing genetic testing while the baby is still in its mother's womb help the parents of the handicapped child set their future plan with less trial and error. Parents are responsible for their child. In order to play their role as a supporter of the baby successfully, they need enough time to be prepared. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know how many newborn babies are neglected by their parents each year? According to the statistics of the ministry, accepted. <laughs> when you say that these babies are being neglected, however, if genetic screenings are allowed, don't you think that these babies will be killed in the first place? Instead um, of being neglected. Instead of being neglected. Um, then are you talking about that um, this um, the testing, uh, this genetic testing can affect the parents to uh, have a tendency to um, abort, uh, have an abortion on their baby. Point of order, I ask the questions, you answer them. Oh. Um, <laughs> not you and the follow-ups. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, then I explain from um, now on. Um, according, uh, I, I'll go on my According to the statistics of the Ministry of Health and Welfare, over 3,000 infants, especially the ones with genetic or physical defects, are abandoned by their parents right after their birth. Then why do those parents expose their babies? There are two main reasons for this problem. First of all, parents are not psychologically prepared to accept and understand that their child is born deformed. There is no parent who expects his child to be born with problems. Not being informed of genetic or physical defects of their baby in advance to his arrival, parents cannot help themselves getting into a panic when they first uh, face the difference of their baby in comparison to others considered to be normal. Planning for the future and contemplating how to bring up uh, their children will be beyond their capacity. Just managing themselves will be such a hard work. In addition to this, parents are not economically prepared too. To help their baby lead a life similar to that of an ordinary child, parents should put a considerable amount of time, effort, and money. Parents are not prepared for those unexpected costs. There is every reason for the parents to be pessimistic about the future with their newborn baby. Thus, some parents have a tendency to evade their responsibility. 
In these points, it is obvious that testing the genes of the embryo before their delivery can brighten the future of both babies and parents by providing more time for parents to work themselves up to the possible hardships they might face and prepare economic basis for the future. So please vote for the opposition side. Okay, thank you, first opposition Woo! speaker. Let's give a warm welcome to Alejandro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Wodo, and I'm the second speaker of Proposition Side. Before I present my argument, I'll first rebut to the argument presented by Opposition Side of the House. They urged that mutually, uh, genetic screening is a uh, they use neutrality of science, and we uh, our our side of the house agree with that statement. However, we believe that people give the value to the neutrality of science. So, so genetic screening should be banned. For example, in if we, for example, in nuclear weapon, although nuclear weapon is, uh, nuclear <coughs> itself is neutral, but it is banned because we use it wrong. And I mean that genetic screening itself is neutral, but because we humans use it in wrong way, it should be illegal. Point of information. No, no, rejected. No, no, no. Sec secondly, uh, uh, Ms. Hart <laughs> <that our, our laughs> <laughs> argued that parents should have, have right to decide whether to abort their children or not. However, our side of the house confirmly believes that although the fetus might have terrible disease or mentally retarded and parents have no ability to nurture their children, no, one, no human beings have, even the parents of one, has the right to deprive life of one just because he or she is retarded or mentally disabled. <laughs> Rejected. Now, I will present my argument. Genetic screening not only increases the chance of losing a fetus, but also lowers the opportunity to have a next healthy pregnancy. According to the research conducted by obstetrics and gynecology, in the last 20 years, by doing Turinic Viola Sample, in short CVS, which is performed by taking the sample of nourishment for baby, 3.12% of pregnancy loss occurred. By doing amniocentesis, which is performed by taking a sample of the flu fluid around the baby out, 0.83% of pregnancy loss occurred. Prenatal diagnosis carried out during the last 14 years, 84,847 cases were amniocentesis, and 30,729 cases were CVS. If we calculate this number, we can reach the fact that about 1,662 fetus loss occurred in the last 14 years. The nominal purpose of genetic screening is to diagnose fetus and lead him or her to live a healthy life. However, in reality, this test is causing a loss of fetus, which is tragic to one's family and also encouraging parents to abort their children. Ladies and gentlemen, should, should genetic screening still be legal? In addition, based on the study managed by New England Journal of Medicine, screening unborn children for genetic defects leads to reduction of the chances of a healthy pregnancy. In other words, genetic screening itself is harmful to one's health, which consequently decreases the chance of getting next healthy baby. Moreover, safety of genetic screening is not perfectly guaranteed yet, and it indicates that genetic screening might have additional danger, or further, more, further danger we are still not aware of. If we sum up these ideas, it seems obvious that genetic screening is harmful activity for both fetus and sequence pregnancy. Please remind this fact, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you ladies and gentlemen to make wise decisions. If you consider, if you really consider a healthy fetus and pregnant woman, I, I believe you will vote for our houses. Thank you for listening to
Thank you, Wando. Thank you, second speaker. Okay, let's give a warm welcome to Kim Jun Young, the next speaker for the AFSA. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Kim Jun Young, the second speaker of the opposition. Today I'm here to prove that the legalization of genetic screening of fetus will definitely be beneficial to both the baby and his parents. I, as the second speaker, will first rebut the proposition team's argument and then go on to our second argument. The first thing I'm going to do is to rebut every single argument that the proposition team made. <clears throat> Uh, proposition team said uh, the privacy matters, and according to Japan's case, data is taken care of by medical institution, not by the firm. Therefore, privacy is not a matter. Um, the next, uh, Mr. Pong, uh, he said uh, <coughs> safety problems, and I will rebut while I'm uh, uh, arguing my points. And from now on, I continue with, my, with our team's second point. We believe that legalizing genetic screening is better than leaving it as illegal because it would bring better results. First, it will not cause the death rate to rise. Uh, in Netherlands, uh, the Royal Dutch Medical Association approved euthanasia in 1984, and the nation finally legalized it in 2001. There is a line that says, Patient's decision must be precise and recheckable. This line clearly states that <coughs> clearly states the right to choose between the two. In addition, there is a study done by Journal of Medical Ethics, which says euthanasia uh, had no influence on the death rate. Ladies and gentlemen, what would this mean? It means that also in the case of genetic screening, uh, it would provoke similar effect because both, uh, both of them protect right to choose. More information. Next, the cost will fall. When it is illegal as the risk of going to jail is high, the cost of committing that action is also very high. However, legalizing genetic screening would lessen the cost and it would make it possible for people to use the service at a much lower price. For example, in Netherlands, <laughs> uh, for example, in Netherlands, uh, after legalizing weak drugs, drug prices greatly fell, almost half the half the price previous prices. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what the reason was? It was that drugs were available without taking any risk. Legalizing genetic screening would also provoke that phenomenon. Pure. Rejected. Uh, furthermore, safety is guaranteed. This is going to rebut his argument. Uh, as professional doctors with affluent knowledge will replace backstreet quacks, genetic screening process would be much safer than before. As both mothers and babies' life is depend upon the situation, guaranteed safety is very important. Finally, and the most importantly, genetic, genetic screening will diminish genetic diseases. According to the Office of Technology Assessment, there are more than 5 million patients in the U.S. who are suffering from nine major genetic, genetic diseases. When legalizing a genetic screening, it will have been found, it, it will have been found when they were in their mother's body, and they might have been received medical treatment earlier. To lessen those previous patients, genetic screening is essential. Uh, to, sum, to sum of my speech, uh, we had four points. Uh, first, it will not cause the death rate to rise. Second, the cost will, cost will fall. And third, safety is guaranteed. And finally, genetic screening will diminish, diminish genetic diseases. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. And please vote for opposition. Thank you. Okay, that was our second ops.
speech, which means now we get the chance to give two floor speeches. Uh, any volunteers, people who haven't given floor speeches before? Take a couple. Uh, Soyeon, have you given one before? Yes. Uh, Sojung, have you given one? Yes. Sudian? Yes. Yusan? Yun. Yun. Uh, Yun-san, <laughs> excuse me. Have you given one before? No? Great. And Jay, oh, sorry? I didn't get the floor You have not? Yeah. You'd like to? <laughs> okay. Uh, so we'll have one boy as well. How about Hojong? Oh, have you given one? Oh, sorry. That. Sana. No. Okay. Sana. Okay. All right. Preference. Proposition and opposition. Okay, very good. Proposition side of this debate. That the demonstrating of fetuses should be legal, and they gave three major arguments. The first one is they will lead high abortion rate. For example, they gave example of China, which allowed sex screening of fetuses, and the result was that uh, most of Chinese parents parents prefer son to daughter, so the uh, unbalance in sex ratio was came out. And the second argument was that uh, it is the matter of privacy. And for example, African American has more tendency to have a genetic dis uh, dis disease, and they were denied by uh, lots of insurance companies, and they have higher unemployment compared to other races. And last argument was that uh, genetic screening of fetuses will harm the healthy pregnancy of the uh, women. For example, uh, they have higher risk when they uh, take the sample of liquid around fetuses in the, uh, in the pregnant women, and they, it will reduce the rate of healthy pregnancies of women. Thank you. Very good. Just so you know, the word, the word for that and the pronunciation is amniocentesis. Amniocentesis. The opposition has um, objectively, objectively brought three points. Um, uh, I, I totally about the I totally agree about the the value of neutrality. If the uh, Genetic screening is ba isn't bad, and people's parents with uh, unethical views are bad. And I believe that parents should be guided and with proper education and instructions. So I believe genetic screening of fetuses, fetuses, fetuses fetus. should fetus. be illegal. Also, with the statistics they have brought, I believe they have effectively, effectively um, made even with the uh, the propositions statistics, mm -hmm. and also. Because uh, they have made genetic screening legalized, uh, they can ensure safety. Uh, so they have countered the argument that they said that genetic screening itself possesses danger. And also, uh, um, I need to talk more. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you both for speakers. Let's now give the opposition side the chance to finish their game. Good afternoon, 
I'm the third speaker for the opposition. Well, the arguments made by the proposition can be summarized in three words. Short, fat, and black. <laughs> Short for lack of reasoning, fat for providing mere assertions, and black for giving a biased view. And I will elaborate on how this makes sense. But first, short for lack of reasoning. They say that generic screening is bad, but what they have concentrated is on abortion. And abortion is what comes after the generic screening, not the generic screening itself. Also, the um, second speaker for Proposition 10 talked about how generic screening would harm the mother and the fetus, providing a bunch of numbers that the audience may have not have comprehended. Well, amazing how their arguments are contradicting our statistics. A study conducted in Oxford University showed that although the prob probability of harm is relatively low, that low pr probability can be neglected according to a bunch of scientists who have shown their skills in various, media, various fields. Second, their arguments are fat for providing mere assertions. They talked about China. If, that eventually, <laughs> the situation in China will spread into the world and that it will spread into abuse of genetic screening. And what they've done is that they have generalized, for example, in the most contro controversial nation in the world. information? No, thank you, sir. <laughs> and then also, the, the evidence they have presented concerning high abortion rates is confined again to a specific region, not the whole world. And ladies and gentlemen, they have, com they have generalized from a small region where um, the problem is the worst. And do you really think that this problem is spreading the world in a matter of time? No, we don't think so. And that's why, no thank you. That's why the arguments from the proposition is fact for providing your assertion. And lastly, their arguments are black for giving a biased view. The weak speaker, uh, excuse me, um, the second speaker has compared death. Uh, the weak speaker, in his point of information, compared death to the suffering of a child. But our side believes that rather than torture the children by letting them live with three ears and 30 toes, we, we are saying we should prevent such tragedy from occurring at all. And while we maintain that genetic, genetic screening should be legal, the pro proposition just criticizes screening itself. And do they care about what will happen if we legalize genetic screening? Not at all. And they see the trees and not the forest, and when they see the trees, they think it's just a bunch of pictures with brown and green. And do you really support this publishing team? No. And lastly, they criticize us of being immoral. But well, how dare they say that? Genetic screening should be legalized to help the, both the parents and the babies as well as contribute to society. And do you call it immoral? We don't think so. And it is obvious that in their weak speech, the weak speaker, weak speaker of the proposition will come out and say, before I begin my speech, and ridicule our arguments with a flattering style and emotional responses face how it frustrations. But ladies and gentlemen, we have an answer for them too. No matter the outrageous rebuttals they may come up with, their one thing remains that is an un unalterable truth. We have provided logical reasoning. We have provided simple and solid evidence that you can comprehend. And most importantly, the opposition has not given or justified their arguments with enough evidence. And that's precisely why you, honorable ladies and gentlemen, should vote for the opposition. Thank you. Rebutting our arguments upon assumptions, reasonings, and a biased opinion. But what they lack is what they think we lack. Let us look at their case. The second speaker summarized his speech into four points. The death rate will not rise, costs will go down, safeties will go up, and it will diminish genetic defects. And also, the first speaker talked about the neutrality of science by rebutting our arguments. Now, my rebuttals will be based upon those five points and also the final, the final speaker of the opposition. And also I'll be rebuilding my case upon our points. Now moving on to the neutrality of science. We the proposition totally agree that that concept exists. That concept is true. Science is neutral. However, who uses science? It is us. It is us, ladies and gentlemen, that we impose the values on science. If it is not dangerous when we do not impose bad values on them, and if they are usable, should they be legalized? 
Let us look at other situations in society. Now, cigarettes. It is illegal to sell them to teenagers. However, cigarettes have been known to use as cures for pancreatitis for infants because of the nicotine substance countering cancer cells. And because, also, marijuana is also used as a medical substance in curing. No, because it can be used in a good way, and because marijuana itself is neutral unless it is overused, should we legalize that? We, sh we the government, and the world, and society itself must regulate we have to regulate the dangerous components of what we have because because humans are not not are, do not have the logistics to control what is in our society. We must ban what we cannot control. Genetic screening is a reason. No, that that is our rebuttal for the first point. Not going on to the death rate, not going down. Now the opposition came up to you and gave you the case of Netherlands, and this and some way the whip speaker came up and stated that one country does not justify the whole world. Now, I really don't see how they can give an example of one single country and justify that death rates will not rise. Information. And they say that China is not justified. China, with the sixth of the population of the world, is not justified. I really don't see how that logic, as they would say, uh, short was it, applies. <laughs> now, the cost of going down and safety is going I will rebuttal those two in the same manner. <laughs> now they say if this is legalized, the cost will go down because apparently what they're trying to claim is that because there's no black market, people will be able to trade in a legitimate market which will have controlled prices. And also they say the safety will go down because apparently crack, uh, quacks will not be doing the surgeries. Ladies and gentlemen, these benefits will occur if they are legalized. We truly agree. But should they be legalized because of these benefits? That is my question to you today. Should they, should they be legalized just because the cost will go down and safety won't go up? No. According to a study done by the California University, it says that one of the professors called Dr. Marcel Setter states that I am surprised to see an absence of a positive effect. Well, they came up here and gave you ambiguous experts and stated that, and stated that genetic screening is safe. Now, I have an expert that says he is not surprised to see any positive effects. What do you think of that, ladies and gentlemen? Now, moving on to the final, diminishing genetic defects. Now, what the opposition fails to realize is that the decrease in genetic defects is because they were never born, not because the genetic screening prevented it. If that is not born, ladies and gentlemen, the decrease is the death of those babies, of those thousands, and the two weeks, the 14 year term of those 1,600 some odd babies, dead. Their diminish is death. That's what you must remember. Now, rebuilding our case. We still need stated three arguments. Genetic testing contributes to high abortion rates. We proved that with China, with six of the population of the world, and by stating that diminishing is actually increasing deaths. Now, test results involve social, emotional, financial consequences. I mean, they were, de they were deprived of their right of health insurance, life insurance, and their lives to serve, and their, and their chances to go into the academy. Now, how is that not discriminating? And third, they stated, uh, we stated that genetic screening itself threatens health privacy. Now, there is, now thank you ladies and gentlemen, and I hope we can propose.